Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is part two of day two of uh, world literature, topics in world literature with Mr. Smith at Tennessee Tech. We uh, Things went off the rails as I was trying to get my survey loaded, and I finally figured out what button I had to unclick in order for them to be allowed to look at the survey. So um, we're going to find that Pi is a little bit of an outcast when it comes to his complex religious identity. Um, and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about interfaith versus interspiritual. These are technical terms in religious studies, and I'm going to use them the way uh, that I've been trained to use them, but I keep in mind that others might not use these terms uh, exactly the way that I'm using these terms. Interfaith refers to multiple individuals from multiple faith traditions working together, uh, studying together, doing activities together. So when Martin Luther King Jr., who was a Baptist minister from Georgia, organized a civil rights march, and he had a Unitarian minister from up north, a Catholic priest, and a Jewish rabbi, excuse me, and they all linked arms and they all marched together, that is an interfaith activity. Because when that Unitarian minister, that Catholic priest, and the Jewish rabbi, and that Baptist minister all went home, they still maintained the fullness of their faith tradition, okay? So these are not blended or complex religious identities. These are people from different religious identities agreeing to work together. I've been a part, not recently, but during my years at Tech, in panels in the UC and in Derryberry, uh, where we would call together people uh, from different uh, faith traditions, and we would have a dialogue together. So you might have a, you know, an imam, a rabbi, um, a minister, you know, and an atheist, for example. Nowadays, interfaith conversations are, are taken very seriously, bringing in agnostic and atheist and non-theist people into the conversation as well. As a matter of fact, there's a guy who coined the term faithiest uh, for the importance of non-believers to participate in community with, with believers. It's a fascinating uh, dialogue there, they're in. So, um, so Pi is not interfaith. Pi is interspiritual. Pi is claiming a, uh, a blended uh, tradition. On page uh, 64 uh, in, your, in your textbooks, um, there's this funny dialogue in chapter uh, 23. Uh, what is your son doing going to the temple, asked the priest. Your son was seen in church crossing himself, said the imam. Your son has gone Muslim, said the pandit. They didn't know that I was a practicing Hindu, Christian, and Muslim. Teenagers always hide a few things from their parents. Isn't that so? Father saw himself as part of the new India, rich, modern, and secular as ice cream. He was a businessman, pronounced busyness man. That's on, on, on page uh, 65. Um, and the parents were uh, taken away by this, and they had to bring in um, uh, religious experts to help them diagnose their son. What, what is wrong with my kid? You know, there's so many kinds of rebellion. You know, he could be drinking and doing drugs and, you know, having premarital sex, but no, he's going to go and be three different religions um, all at once. Um, you must be mistaken. He's a good Muslim boy, it says on 66. And then somebody else says, no, he's a good his Hindu boy. Um, uh, and then somebody else says, uh, Pi was born a Hindu, lives a Hindu, and will die a Hindu. The three wise men stared at each other, breathless and disbelieving. Lord, avert their eyes from me, the text says, I whispered in my soul. All eyes fell upon me. And then they go to arguing on page 67. They're arguing the specifics of the religion. Um, well, a whole lot of good it did God to be with you. You tried to kill him. You banged him to a cross with great big nails. Is that a civilized way of to treat a prophet? The prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, brought us the word of God without any undignified nonsense and died at a ripe old age. Um, and then they go into arguing, you know, is, is Muhammad uh, the prophet? Uh, is Jesus the son of God? Um, and so on. And then later on it says, um, what it comes down to, the priest put out with a cool rage, is whether Pi wants real religion or myths from a cartoon strip, gods or idols, gods or colonial gods. And they were arguing still. Um, and uh, they finally came to the conclusion that this young person who has chosen a blended path, that's the main character of our book, has chosen this blended path. They, they, they're, the religious leaders are having none of it. They said he can't be a Hindu, a Christian, 
and a Muslim. It is impossible. He must choose. Now, I wonder if anybody here knows anybody from a blended path. Maybe because if your, your parents were a mixed marriage or were from different religious traditions, maybe you grew up on a blended path uh, because of your parents coming from different uh, religious lineages. Maybe you are, I'm a seeker. And so I've changed my religion, you know, just dozens of times. And, I, I, and I've moved through all different kinds of religious uh, communities and religious practices. And I've always been in, in pursuit of, of a higher power or God or the great, the great mystery, uh, the great divine uh, within and without. But I've, I've never stayed anywhere. You know, I've been a Protestant pastor for three years once in the past, but I've, I've never stayed in exactly um, the same uh, place. And so I identify with Pi completely, but I'd be curious to have some of y'all's responses and reactions. Do you find this blended path uh, inspiring, intoxicating, interesting, or do you find it infuriating, frustrating, annoying, like, you know, get a life, pick a, pick a side? Um, so interfaith is being very reputable now. You sit at the different tables, you, uh, you work together in peace, but then at the end of the day, you go back to your temple or to your mosque or to your uh, chapel and you stay in your in your corner uh the rest of the time um the idea of of, of a blended tradition is called syncretism and it's, it's come among even scholars to have a negative implication as, as somehow it's kind of watered down as sort of like oh it's like going to the calf did you go to the calf uh today at lunch and did you go just to the pizza side or did you go where there's a buffet and you have multiple options? It's all you can eat. Have you treated religion uh, just like a, you know, going to the calf and you, you'll have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And so that spiritual buffet has been has been criticized as not having integrity and authenticity. Um, people who are doing this have been accused of having a, 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 a privatized uh, religion, um, a hybrid religion, a hyphenated religion, a postmodern, goofy, or even uh, 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 silly uh, uh, religion. And some of these uh, these hyphenated actual blended paths that are actually uh, 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 true. It, can everybody else hear me? I'm hearing uh, that at least uh, some folks are not uh, able to, to to hear me. Is everybody else getting? Is it coming through for the rest of you guys? <laughs> Hate to be lecturing into the into thin air. Thank you uh, very much. So. Um, um, you won't be able to see the video because uh, uh, it will only be audio, but you can always dial in on the phone. There is a, a phone number. Um, and I would just go ahead and encourage everybody to save this. Uh, so on days when it's just been uh, particularly frustrating that you can just go ahead and uh, add this uh, phone number. The first, uh, uh, you know, nine, uh, what is that? Uh, first 13, I can't even count, six plus, first 10 digits is the phone number. And then there's a, a, a passcode um, that follows that, followed by the pound key there. Um, but I'm also, um, on actual lecture days, I won't always uh, have a traditional lecture, but when I do have a lecture, I will uh, try to make a recording, and I'll, then I'll make that available later um, in case you missed everything. Not not that many people go back and watch the videos, but a couple of you do, and it's very worth making that, even just for uh, the few of you who will watch uh, the videos. And so this hyphenated, you'll end up with these these crazy hybrids like Catholic Buddhist, uh, Zen Presbyterian, New Age, Atheist, Jew, and the same, that's a phrase, Atheist Jew is a very popular identity in, in North America, Christo-Pagan. Um, so the, you will find um, um, this. Um, so this novel has uh, in the very early, 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 early pages, it's in italics, and I love it in the, in the movie version where the, one of the characters uh, speaks this, um, that says, I have a story that will make you believe in God. And uh, the adventurer, so the first part of this is kind of realistic. And then at the second half of the, of the novel is this fantastic adventure, which you all are encouraged to go ahead and read on your own, uh, that this fantastic adventure uh, uh, will have the, the recipe of making um, the reader believe in God. So it'll be curious to see if this book is in, in any way um, has that impact on you um, in reading it. You're also encouraged on your own uh, to please um, uh, take the time 
to also uh, watch the film version of uh, The Life of Pi. Um, and, and, and so we will find out uh, if this book is a compelling story for any of you as readers in terms of cultivating a spiritual uh, uh, mindset and also your thoughts on this idea of a blended or a mixed path. Is inner spirituality a valid thing? Inner faith, we can't really argue because it exists, right? Those kinds of um, convergences and, and collaborations that I discussed, where you're gonna have these people from different groups gathering together and sitting together and talking together, that's already happening. It's been going on uh, for a long time. Is this book or will, will this class be a religious story for non-religious persons? I've had the, the honor of having students in my classes uh, when uh, we take an academic um, you know, approach to faith uh, and spirituality in, in, embedded in art and literature. I want you to make clear this is not a religion class or a theology class. Uh, this is a literature course. And we're talking about these themes because these themes are already embedded in art and literature and most uh, sacred traditions have some text in them, like the Bible itself is a work of liter literary accomplishment. You know, the Bible is a literary work, literary book. Uh, the book of Job is fantastic. We could do that book all day long uh, as a literary uh, project. But I've had the honor of students who have, have, have in investigated these topics with me in courses like this one and also my American literature course, who themselves are agnostic or atheist, non-believers, who have taken a approach to the mystery of it all and the interesting, enchanting, and tantalizing aspects of it all to where they would be moved even though they're not religious. I know non-religious people and you throw on the right religious song, the right hymn or the right music, and they will have a religious experience even if they are non-religious people. So here's our protagonist, Pi. They did not know I was a practicing Hindu, Christian, and Muslim. Teenagers always hide a few things from their parents. Isn't that so? And so again, I, I throw that out there because it's kind of like he's rebelling. And I think it's so funny. I'm not saying that one should necessarily, you know, you know, abuse drugs or alcohol or have lots of sex or whatever. Like I just, you know, like stay out too late. But I just threw that out there, you know, like a normal rebellion that we expect of our teenagers is maybe some intoxication or maybe some promiscuity. But here we go. This guy's going to go and, and really challenge the entire world paradigm uh, uh, that he's been uh, has been raised. And he even has a prayer at one point in the book where he prays to multiple uh, identities of the deity. He prays to the deity in multiple ways. Vishnu, preserve me. Allah, protect me. Christ, save me. To Christ who is alive, to Lord Krishna for having put Jesus of Nazareth in my way. So class, I believe that you're living in a movie of which you guys are the main character. I believe that you guys are living in the greatest novel of which you are the main character. Your life is an adventure uh, uh, story. And uh, this is a class in which I hope you will live parallel to the adventures of our texts and our protagonists and our poems and our stories and try to the best of your ability to find yourself and to locate yourself um, in these stories um, as we as we read them, because your life itself is a story. This is a fictional book. I had some somebody ask at one point, "Is this a true story, Mr. Smith?" No. And there's a few. If you read through the whole novel, you'll you'll find out there's a few really fantastic and wild things that happen in the story that that show us there's no way that it could be. Uh, there's no way that it could be uh, a true story. And uh, hopefully, you'll, you'll read the whole book. Uh, this week and next week, and that I hope you also um, will take the time uh, to watch the film. Um, so, how would uh, this is a great question from the chat? I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording again, and this ended up being in uh, in two parts. So, uh, part two of uh, complex religious identity in topics in world literature, fall 20, 21 Tennessee Tech with Mr. Smith.